Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the autopilot and MCP of the Boeing 747-8 Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now, let me preface everything first by saying that my understanding of how this works versus how a lot of the functionality of it works in the flight simulator, at least as of November of 2020, is a little bit off. Now, you know, one of the things that we have seen is, you know, playing with the PMDG 747s, you know, playing with some of the ones from X-Plane, you know, the SSG, and kind of getting a feel of all the super-duper payware versions. And then taking a look at this version, there's definitely going to be a little bit of, hmm. Again, since I'm not an actual pilot of this particular type of aircraft, I can't speak to some of these, but it will walk you through the basic functionality of it, as well as kind of how to work around some of the common problems that you might face. So uh, first things first, uh, we're sitting here in a beautiful Manchester, New Hampshire. It's a lovely day. Good fair weather. We're going to be doing a relatively short flight, just kind of showing off all the different functions. I'll be doing automatic flight as well as uh, setting everything up to be manual, showing you how you can change your radio frequencies, changing how you can change your performance settings, everything along those lines in this aircraft. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, on this aircraft, your remote control panel is going to be your primary way of dictating what the autopilot is doing. It's worth noting that whatever you have set here will also be represented in this little teeny tiny box that you have over here on your left. Now one of the reasons I really like this box is just because the lights turned on over here doesn't mean the automatic pilot is actually set to that mode. As a matter of fact, you're going to commonly find that you're going to activate a specific mode but have no control over the automatic pilot. So it's worth noting, just take a look here and you can have a general idea of what's going on. Now first things first, if you're going to use this autopilot well, you want to absolutely make sure that you set your flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator up very, very carefully before you come over the simulator. So for me, if I actually come down to my FMS real quick and I go over to my legs page, I can see that each and every little one of my waypoints that I'm going to be flying today have actually been pre-programmed in here so that they have all the details they want. Now, one of the cool things is, because I took the time to do all of that, I noticed that I have two different lines here. I have one that indicates my speed at that waypoint, and the second one, which is very critical, indicates the altitude of that waypoint. Now, if we let the flight management system of this aircraft fly this particular airplane, it would literally do all the work for me all the way down to the ground if I let it do so. It'll take me up at this speed, it'll get me to this altitude, and then when it comes time to descend, I could even come in here and say, uh, we want to use uh, I less 2.4 and literally boop now if you take a look here I've got a whole brand new page of information with brand new speeds brand new altitudes everything pre-automatically programmed this is the way the aircraft was meant to be flown so now in order to access all this wonderful information we're going to be needing to go ahead and set up a couple things on the actual autopilot itself namely your LNAV, which is lateral navigation, and VNAV, which is your vertical navigation. LNAV is going to be literally your left, right. Your VNAV is going to be up, down, as well as your speed. One of the craziest things you can do in this aircraft is you can actually arm LNAV and VNAV before you've actually taken off. Now, like I was mentioning a minute ago, if you come down here, you'll see that LNAV and VNAV are in white, meaning they've been selected, but they haven't actually been activated at this time. So we could actually shut that off because I'd rather show it off to you in the air. No Notice when you disable those modes, other modes automatically flip themselves on. That's like I said, a very, very common thing. You're going to have to kind of get the hang of when you're playing a little bit around this. Like clearly I don't need altitude hold. Note though, the automatic pilot itself did not turn itself on. By the way, if you need to shut up the autopilot in a hurry, you've got this clink. You can slap this thing down. You can also press these buttons here. So let's go ahead and take a look now at what we need to do for setup for takeoff. Uh, the first thing we want to do before we get this thing in the air is we need to decide are we going to be doing a manual takeoff? Are we going to do a takeoff go around where the automatic throttle is going to do the work for us? We need to make that decision first. Generally, and I'm saying from a procedural perspective, we want to use toga mode, which is takeoff and go around. So to set that up, before we even press the magic button, we need to make sure our FMS performance information is set correctly. So I'm actually going to go over here. I'm going to go to init ref, which bases, brings us back to the index, so to speak. I'm going to go ahead and pop the perf button. And this is going to give us all of our performance features. Again, it has our cruise altitude. Notice that's already been listed. If we actually change this cruise altitude, let's say I want it to 160, notice my flight plan automatically updates itself, which is awesome. You're going to want to be able to do that very, very quickly in the case that you're flying on something like IVAC 
Dow or VATSIM, and they're asking you to change your cruise altitude. But anyway, let's go ahead and go back to that page. I'll set it back to the way it was just a minute ago. In the real world, cost index would be a big deal. We're not going to worry about that. I'm going to go to the thrust limit page. The thrust limit page is what dictates what your automatic throttle is willing to use as far as thrust. You can see right now that it's set to takeoff power minus 10%. So we're actually only getting 90% of our total takeoff power. If we wanted to, we could actually click here and set it to 100% of our takeoff power. Notice now that our engines were allowed to swing up to 97%. But do minus 20, take a look here. It's going to drop us to 77.9%. Now, a few of you are probably saying, you know, does this really matter? Does this set itself up automatically quite well? Absolutely. It actually does a really nice job. Leaving it at the minus 10% is fine. Now, what do you think TOB means? Unfortunately, we don't have that option. This is called takeoff bump. What this would actually do is give us 105% of our thrust, but we can't get that on this particular version. The other thing we could do, of course, in the real world, and again, this isn't an FMS tutorial, is we could actually derate the engines by picking a higher altitude to our temperature. Just the important thing that you need to keep an eye out for is this is going to be our maximum power available to us. So that's just something to think about. Takeoff, uh, this has some very, very valuable numbers for us on it. The most important one being this guy right here, your V rotate, which is when you're going to pull the nose of the plane up, as well as your V2, which is going to be initial climb out speed. Now, if you're using real world procedures for this, keep in mind every airline is going to have their own opinion on this. I'm only going to do what works best for me. Is you're actually going to come over to my selected speed and you're going to dial in that V2 value. Now, normally this aircraft would have done that for us automatically, but for us, we're just going to have to kind of do it ourselves. Keep in mind, if you use a different flap setting for takeoff, it will change this V2 value. You know, if I slap down to 20 degrees of knots, notice my V2 value is now 143. If I pop this back up to what it was at 10 degrees of knots, notice my V2 goes to 155. Let's say I do 5 degrees, 167. So that's actually a pretty slick trick that allows you to determine what is your initial climb out speed is going to be. Keep in mind your climb out speed is also going to be dictated by things like uh, noise abatement procedures, but we're not going to worry about that today. So that's the first thing I like to do. Next thing I like to do is I like to make sure the flight director is set. I like to make sure the auto throttle is in the arm position. And I also like to set my first altitude. Usually this altitude altitude is told to you by air traffic control. They're going to say, climb and maintain 4,000 feet until crossing, you know, a particular waypoint or something like that. For folks who are just doing single player, kind of keeping it relaxed, I always just set this to my top altitude. This altitude setting is very important because it's going to act as a limiter to prevent the aircraft from passing this altitude, both vertically going up as well as vertically going down. So keep that in the back of your head. Next thing I like to do before takeoff is I like to make sure my heading, the way I'm facing, matches up. This is a really, really good trick to use because you can see my current heading is 238. You can see I'm set for 238. Now, what a lot of people will actually do is they'll press the hold button here, and that will tell you to go ahead and follow these bars to keep your aircraft on the same heading as your runway that you're taking off from. It's an incredibly slick trick. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and get rolling. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take the plane off. Things we need to check for, we normally would need to make sure that our arm, our, our speed brakes are armed. In the real world, you just grab this lever and you pull it up a little bit and it goes click and it snaps into the right spot. But in this one, we're just going to leave it forward. The other thing we want to do is confirm that a reject takeoff has been set correctly. A lot of people like to go to the progress page. I'm a huge fan of that. I also like the legs page so it can kind of tell us where we need to be. And now we're pretty much ready to go. So now we have to decide, are we going to do a TOCA takeoff? Or we're going to let the engines control themselves, which is generally going to be preferred. Or are we going to do a manual takeoff? We're just going to and kind of get going at it. For today's demonstration, since this is an autopilot demonstration, we're going to do a good old fashioned TOCA takeoff. So the TOCA switch on a 747 are these two little finger switches right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on them. And as soon as you do that, the engines are going to spool up to our power that we selected inside of that page. So now go ahead and reset my view real quick and off we go. Now my throttle that's actually sitting on my desk now is pulled all the way back towards me. I'm not actually telling it to go forward, I'm not telling it to go fast. The automatic throttle is doing all the work for us at this time. So now all we have to do is keep the plane centered on the runway. V1, rotate, V2. We're gonna go ahead and gently lift up the nose. Remember, you don't wanna smack the tail. As soon as you see you're going at vertical speed, go ahead and slap that handle in the upwards position and start climbing. 
Now, one of the things I love is because we set up our heading select already, it tells us right in the center where we need to be in order to stay on that center line we just flew at. So again, we're gonna be climbing at a pretty aggressive speed. Normally we'd be doing 155, but that's gonna be extremely uncomfortable for passengers. Keep in mind, we're doing a full power takeoff here. And then gently, once we cross our noise abatement altitude, which is right there, we're gonna go ahead and start gently nosing over as well as bringing up our flaps. I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here. Okay, so what are we looking at now? So first things first, now we gotta think about what mode we wanna enable. Now, if we want this aircraft to fly its flight plan directly, we can actually activate LNAV and VNAV now. So I'm gonna click on LNAV for left and right. I'm gonna press VNAV. Notice the moment we did that, this little display for speed instantly went blank because this aircraft is now taking control of what we need to do in order to fly this aircraft. In this case, it's going to be controlling our speed. It's also gonna be controlling our nose angle as well as our left and right in order to keep us on that course that we plot it. Now, currently the automatic pilot is actually switched off. I'm flying this by hand because I don't want the nose of the plane to sound like a doink and go down very, very aggressively. Go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot. Autopilot's on because you can tell that we've got command. And if also you come down here and look, it also says command. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit real quick. So you can see that we are now on our flight plan. If I don't touch anything on this aircraft, it will basically bring us all the way down to the ground and safely plop us down. I mean, the engine's being managed automatically. The um, navigation is being handled automatically. Even my altitude is being handled automatically at this time. So now where things get sort of interesting here is um, the other modes in the autopilot. Now let's say, you know, we're cruising along real quickly and uh, we suddenly get a call from air traffic control and they say, uh, turn right heading uh, tree zero zero. So we could go ahead and come to my heading hold, set this to tree zero zero, and then click this little button in the middle that says heading select on. Notice the moment I do that, the LNAV light shuts itself off because we are no longer under control of the aircraft left and right as far as following our flight plan. Instead, it's going to be flying along this little magenta line that we've just selected moments later. Now, a common mistake everybody makes is they press this button, which holds your current heading, versus this button, which actually selects the heading that you want to. Notice after pressing that button, it says heading cell directly in the center here. So now we're in good shape. Uh, they call us back moments later. They say, uh, could you uh, turn back to whatever that previous heading was? Now, the cool thing here is I can press hold, which will lock our heading. And then I can set the heading that I need to use and then press heading select. And now the whole aircraft will turn itself onto that new heading. So you don't get to uh, 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 as it tries to go along. Now notice this aircraft is still climbing, but notice the aircraft stopped climbing at once it hit 10,000 because the aircraft had to accelerate up to its new climb speed. So I'd flip off the landing lights. We don't need those right now. So let's say we go ahead and line ourselves back up, heading towards cloud. Again, we're in heading select mode and we will go back to lateral navigation mode. Now the aircraft is going to be getting its uh, roll commands directly from the flight management computer. Let's say we get a call from air traffic control that says a uh, hold uh, 12,500. I'm not sure why they tell us to hold at that altitude, but again, it's air traffic control, it's mystery. At any time, you could press this button. Notice the moment I smacked that button, it instantaneously snapped us into speed intervention mode because now we can control our speed and the aircraft is going to start finding its way back down to that altitude. Note my automatic throttle here is automatically pulling itself down because as the nose starts to come over as we try to get back to that correct altitude, we're obviously going to accelerate too aggressively. So we'll let the aircraft kind of drift back down over to the 13,500 feet. Now it's worth taking a look at some of the pitch modes. So let's get down to about 12,600 here. Let's say we get a call from air traffic control saying, uh, climb and maintain uh, flight level one tree zero. You know, we confirm like we normally do. Actually, we do one tree five, just to make things a little bit interesting for us. Now what we can do is we can actually select our method to get up to this altitude. Notice that the selected altitude is now marked here. Notice our selected speed is marked over here. Now we have so many different ways to get to that altitude. The first method we can use is we can use vertical speed mode. I'm going to press VS and I'm just going to go up, 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 up. And now the aircraft is going to start climbing at 500 feet per minute until it hits 13,500 feet. That's one of the modes we can use. It's, and it's, it's not too handy. Obviously, if I want to climb a little faster, 
I can increase my vertical speed. Note, because I'm on automatic throttle right now, this aircraft is actually throttling itself up in order to maintain this vertical speed. Yes, you can actually overwhelm it. You know, if I did something absurd, like, you know, 6,500 feet per minute or something like that, we would literally run out of throttle and we could even stall this aircraft, which is generally not recommended in something this large. Keep in mind, at any point, I can say, forget it. I just want to go back to VNAV and I can click VNAV. Now the aircraft is going to take back over again. Keep in mind, VNAV is trying to hunt 14,000 feet right now. Now, let's say we get a call from air traffic control and they say, uh, climb and maintain a flight level 160. We go, oh God. So we go to 160. So the next mode we're going to take a look at is called flight level change. It's flitch. What this does is it tries to hold the current speed of the aircraft and just maintain it all the way up to that altitude. So if I press flitch now, what will happen is, is unfortunately, because my automatic throttle mode is on, it's going to try to maintain a speed while it tries to climb and basically get in a fight with itself. And you can see we're starting to climb really slowly here. If I actually disengage speed mode, I'm going to shut off the auto throttle, go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward like an absurd person here, notice my aircraft now pitches up to maintain this 310 knots. Now if I pull my throttle way back like this, Notice the nose of the plane comes down to try to keep that 310 knots, which reduces our vertical speed. That's one of the reasons why flight level change is so effective. So let's go ahead and our level ourselves out right here at 15,200 feet. Go ahead and I'm going to leave the auto throttle off actually. Notice you can't have VNAV without auto throttle. So let's say now that I want to use flight level change to descend. So let's go ahead and level ourselves out. Let me say I set my altitude to be, hmm, we'll say 12,000 feet. Now, if I press flight level change mode and pull the throttle all the way to zero, the plane will nose down aggressively in order to try to maintain this 310 knots as we descend. Now, if I didn't want to descend this quickly, all I could do is give myself a little tiny bit of throttle here, and that would instantly compensate for it. You can see that at least with Flight Simulator at this time in November 2020, that is much too aggressive of a descent. So you want to be very, very cautious with that. So now let's go ahead and uh, go back to VNAV mode. Let's set it to the altitude we're supposed to be at right now. By the way, you can always check what altitude you're supposed to be at by coming down here and taking a look at your little display. I'm actually going to turn on auto throttle again. You can see that our new altitude is actually supposed to be 3,000 feet because we're actually getting ready to land this plane. So at this point, the aircraft would actually start descending on its own once it hits this point that says decel. Now, some of you are probably going, okay, so this is, oh, it's starting to make a little bit of sense, but what if I wanted to do something like fly a, a VOR as opposed to, you know, fly conventional, you know, GPS navigation? Well, you actually can fly VORs in this aircraft. For example, if I came down here, I could press nav radio and you could actually manually dial in a VOR frequency. Like I could say 114.40, which is a Manchester VOR. And then you could actually type in the course you wanted. So I could say, let's say 238, press that button. Of course, you're sitting there going, what? Huh? Where, I don't, I don't, where's my information? Well, uh, let's go ahead and heading hold mode for a second here. And I'm going to flip this switch to VOR. Now you can actually see your VOR information. So in this case, we're actually slightly to the right of where we would need to be. We could actually come in here and do something really silly, like we'll say 225, for example, and change our course. That's the other way. If I did 245, we could set the course the other way. You can actually dynamically set the course just like you would normally do. Now, where it gets a little tricky, and uh, by tricky, I mean really tricky, and you got to be cautious with this, is if we wanted to follow this line now, we would have to press the LOC button, which is the localizer select button. This would enable us to actually follow this course. And if I went boop like this, the whole aircraft should take a right turn. You can see it turn green, and we're actually now following a VOR as opposed to following what the flight management computer does. Okay, time to land this thing. So we're going to have to get back down from an enormous amount of altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and flip on lateral navigation one more time. Whoa. You'll do that about a thousand times. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and set this thing nice and low. The real plane, by the way, and, you know, I've sat in one of the cockpits of these things. It's quite a project. Notice, by the way, that the aircraft is still following the VOR. If you want to go back to following the FMS, you have to actually take the time to switch it back to map mode. Otherwise, it will not follow. And you can actually look really closely. My LNAV is set to white right now, which means I'm not even following my original course. Yikes. So you want to be very cautious about that. All right. Aircraft is slowing itself down a little aggressively here. I'm going to go ahead and disable that. I'm going to go ahead and use the throttle by myself. We don't want this thing to fall out of the sky. Again, it's things you're going to have to always be keeping an eye out for every single time you fly this aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and do a flight level change. 
bring in a little bit of speed brakes here and help kind of slow things down. We need to get this aircraft down quickly. And we'll go ahead and set ourselves up for that top altitude. Now, the good news is for those of you who have the 787, the controls here are basically exactly the same. It doesn't make that much of a difference which aircraft you actually use. By the way, uh, once you cross 10,000 feet, you're going to want to make sure your airspeed is down to 250. Otherwise, you're going to be breaking a lot of speed limits, so be very cautious with that. Now, because I'm in flight level change mode, check this out. The aircraft will actually start to pitch itself up in a moment in order to compensate for it. But notice we're about 250 knots, we're about 10,000 feet. We're going to go ahead and flip on our landing lights. Again, we're being very aggressive with this aircraft just for the purposes of demonstration. By the way, it looks like we're still a little off. Uh, notice LNAV has still been uh, dis deselected. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick little heading select. I'll set this to 205. A little bit of buffeting there. It happens sometimes. And now we're going to reacquire. So yeah, you can see LNAV has now been select. Now we're good to go. Look outside the window. Getting a little bit of buffet there. Nothing too, too bad. What kind of Buffet? Is it like a Jimmy Buffet? Is it a Buffet, like a uh, Buffet the Vampire Slayer? I'm really not sure. Again, being very, very, very aggressive with this aircraft. Please don't do this when you have passengers on board. Right, I'm getting down to about 5,000 feet. Notice I've shut my auto throttle off here because I don't want the aircraft to try to speed up to the speed I'm trying to descend at. You can't descend when that happens. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as well. I'm continuing to use lateral navigation because it's doing a really nice job of getting us ready to land this plane. Okay, so now it's time to start thinking about landing this particular aircraft. Now, one of the greatest things about these big airliners is they have automatic landing functionality. You know, it's unlike anything you've probably ever seen before. The aircraft will literally bring itself all the way down to the ground and set down. That being said, it is the roughest auto land I've ever experienced in a flight simulator before. We're going to do it anyway, just for the purposes of demonstration. But just keep in mind that, you know, if you're trying to win points by not crushing passengers' skulls, you want to be very, very cautious with using it yourself. So the nice thing is because I went to uh, departures and arrivals and I selected my airport, it automatically preloads the ILS frequency into my navigation radio. As a matter of fact, if you take a look right here, you can see it's already been pre-selected ready to go, which means when we finally get close enough to land the aircraft in an ILS, you're actually going to automatically see the ILS bars appear here on the side of my little display. That's one of the nicest tricks. If you want to kind of like cut to the taste kind of a thing, you can actually tell this thing to display it at any point. Now in the real plane, normally what we would do is we'd come down here, we'd hit initial ref, we'd hit approach, and it would give us useful information such as what our approach speed is. In this case, our approach speed is going to be 147. We're going to let the auto throttle actually control that particular speed for us just to make our life a little bit simpler today. So one thing we could do too is if we want to kind of get it going right away, I'm actually going to switch to heading hold mode. I'm going to go ahead and reduce our speed. This means we're going a lot slower to land something that weighs this much. Again, I'm not on auto throttle at this time. The aircraft's going to slow down quite nicely. Remember, I'm still in flight level change. The nose is going to suddenly going to peel over in just a second. Go ahead and bring in my first notch of flaps. I'm going to go ahead and prepare my brakes. Everything looks pretty good so far. Look out the window. Yep, I can already see the runway. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So now what we can do is we can actually grab this and flip it to approach mode. Now approach mode is going to give us this little teeny tiny bar here that's going to tell us where we need to be in order left and right to land the plane. Now remember, it's getting this information from whatever this particular ILS frequency has been set to. For us, we're landing on runway 24 today, so you can see we're just slightly off to it. And you can see as soon as this bar starts moving, not only do I see it here, but I also see the up-down indication right here. Again, there are much, much better videos explaining things like how to go ahead and land the aircraft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 200 knots. I'm going to make sure speed mode has been selected. And now the aircraft is actually under control of the auto throttle again. So this throttle is actually going to be controlled automatically. Now here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to arm the approach by pressing the APP button. Notice it turns on all three autopilots together. Now this aircraft is under automatic landing control. You can see right here that this is our left-right indication we're just slightly too far off to the right and you can see over here very very clearly visually what we need to do looking out the front window there you can see a little runway we're actually pretty well lined up so i don't really have to do a lot of work here now all we have to do is start thinking about setting our flaps up and go ahead and slap the flaps 20 flaps 10 rather and you can even see the little bar for our flaps now because we already took the time to do all those quick little calculations earlier 
go down to the approach page real quick. I can see I can do 147, always add five knots to it. So at 30 degrees of flaps, we're gonna be doing 152 knots. So I'm just gonna come right on over here, set this to 152, 152. Again, the automatic throttle and speed mode turned on. So that means the automatic throttle is going to control the speed of the aircraft. Bring in our next notch of flaps. Of course, you never put that notch of flaps down without dropping the landing gear, which I've taken care of. Go ahead and bring in our last couple notches of flaps here. Again, these are very slow moving flaps. And notice the auto throttle automatically started speeding up to maintain our selected speed. So I've got approach mode on. I've got, don't worry about this. This is, <laughs> we're holding our altitude because we haven't actually gotten to the altitude we need to be to start descending. We're not supposed to hit that until we hit this next waypoint in a moment. All right, so now the aircraft is completely on automatic landing. You can see my speed has been selected. Oh, we said 153, didn't we? 152, my apologies. The good thing to do now is to start thinking about your missed approach procedure in the event that you do. In this case, we're gonna be going right back up to this altitude, which is super lucky. And we're gonna be on a, I believe it's a 360. And again, we can pre-select this right now. I don't even need to worry about it. So we can do that missed approach in a moment. Now, one of the greatest things about this plane is if you're landing this plane on automatic, at any point, if something doesn't go right, you can come down here and slap the uh, toga buttons one more time and it will activate the go around protocol causing this aircraft to accelerate very aggressively. Now all it is is a matter of uh, checking to make sure everything else is in order. Just looking out my front window real quickly. I can see the end of the runway pretty clearly from where I'm sitting. It's right there. And we're just going to basically cruise. You can see now that my glide slope is almost captured. Now keep in mind when we normally be doing this, we basically have zero weather, uh, zero visibility. One thing I like to do now is I like to double check to see where the throttles themselves are. I can see the throttles are just about at the 50% point. The reason I like to know that during an automatic landing is I want to be able to go ahead and look at my own throttle and make sure that's at the same position. If I need to do the last part of the landing by hand, for example, this is a great way to do it. All right, you can see that last piece of my glide slope is now crossing this line here. So we're pretty much perfectly lined up left and right. We are perfectly lined up straight ahead as well. We've got a little bit of a crosswind, but it's not gonna be really enough to bother us that much. And again, you can take a look very clearly that all my modes are all set up. This does not necessarily need to be on. As a matter of fact, you see this little white text that says GS that is arming the glide slope. As soon as this line gets crossed, it should automatically grab onto it. If it gives you trouble, of course, we can override it manually as well. There it goes. Ta-da! So now the aircraft is ready to land itself. If I didn't touch anything, this aircraft would literally put itself on the ground. And that's exactly what we're going to let it do, just to demonstrate just how efficient this automatic pilot is. And as I was saying a couple minutes ago, this is not going to be the world's smoothest or more stable approach. I think they need to be tuning the autopilot constants just a little bit. I feel really sorry for anybody who accidentally left the drink cart unlocked because it's going to be going back and forth on the inside of this place quite a bit as we make our slow descent all the way down to the ground. A couple other things I just want to mention as uh, we're kind of finishing up here today. Uh, one thing is the automatic throttle, it's very, very effective if you want to fly the entire flight in an LNAV and VNAV. But like I was saying, you got to be really, really cautious with it when you are in any situation where you're trying to do aggressive changes. Really, you've got to take the time to practice it and kind of really, really play with it in order to get comfortable. Other thing I got to warn you about is the head heading hold is not the same thing as heading select. You know, there's one more thing we did not see, and that's something called speed intervention. Let's say that we have VNAV mode on and we're climbing upwards and all of a sudden we get a call from air traffic control asking us to go to a certain speed for whatever reason. We can actually take our fingers and push this button in and then dial in the speed that we want and actually override whatever speed the FMS is currently telling us to do. That's a really, really slick trick that you can use. Personally, I don't think I've ever used it except when we were in holding. More than once I've been asked to fly a holding pattern. And again, because you've got these powerful heading tools on here, at any point we could just roll in and go ahead and set it to do our heading hold and then come back around and you know go back to LNAV, for example, and continue our flight. Now the FMS also has the ability to actually select a specific point you want to fly to. I could actually go to legs and I could type in my own waypoint that this will actually go towards in a GPS fashion. But that's going to be a little beyond the context and a little beyond what we're looking at with this automatic pilot tutorial here. Again, we just want to try to keep 
keep things relatively simple so everybody can get started. For those of you on the 787, the controls are exactly the same. As a matter of fact, the modes are exactly the same. Everything else is exactly the same. You're not going to have too, too much trouble with anything. Now, at any point, of course, uh, we could go ahead and slap off our automatic pilot. Keep in mind, if you do that, the automatic throttle is still engaged. So if I start pulling back, for example, my throttles will suddenly slam themselves forward as the aircraft tries to keep up with the new power and new uh, demands for energy. All right, we got ourselves fairly well lined up. When you land this thing, by the way, remember you're 65 feet in the air when you um, go ahead and do the flare. You're literally that much higher off the ground than you are normally. So it's kind of worthwhile kind of looking at it from its own way. Another thing you want is uh, for those of you who are kind of newer to airliners, make sure you have a key bound to your reverse thrust button. That way, when you do land, you can slap it into reverse very, very quickly and give the thing full reverse power. It works great. It slows this thing down in a jiffy. Now, notice how much oscillation we're getting up and down. This is going to make our automatic landing that much tighter. Uh, again, I'm not touching the controls right now. My hands are not on the controls. My hands are on the mouse, and my other hands on the throttle just in case I have to take over. But it's just amazing what this aircraft is. And uh, by the way, you don't have to be on app mode to use the approach hold. You just have to make sure you're on map mode or app mode. All right, everybody ready for the big clunk? This is a really cool road, by the way. It's super duper twisty, and there's always a little guy by the police station right over here on the right. Anyway, anyway, I've never gone down this road, I don't think. Okay, aircraft is controlling itself. What I like to do right when we get close to the ground is I like to disengage auto throttle, and I like to go ahead and go retard, retard, just like in the Airbus. Ready for the bump? 30, 20, 10. Oh! Full reverse. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, I know this is virtual, but I felt that in my back. Ow, oh my God, that hurt. Okay, so that concludes our little tutorial on the uh, different modes of autopilot on the Boeing aircraft inside a flight simulator. I think it's amazing that you can do what you can with this aircraft completely automatically. Like I said, you're going to have to get kind of used to it. I still recommend, you know, when you're going to do it, stick to LNAV and VNAV mode and just really, really carefully make sure your flight plan's in good order before you get into the simulator. It's going to make your experience learning these aircraft a thousand percent better. Other than that, uh, hopefully, you know, if there's any questions, go through it. The FMS is its own beast and that's going to be a drastically different kind of video tutorial than we saw today. Enjoy.